The Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Issa Pantami, revealed on Tuesday that terrorists now use social media as a medium for communications and recruitment of new followers who will commit crimes in Nigeria. Pantami, while delivering a lecture on leadership in counter-terrorism and counter-violent extremism in Abuja, said it's evident that terrorists are exploiting social media, encrypted communications and the dark web to spread propaganda, recruit new followers and coordinate attacks. The minister noted that this rapidly evolving phenomenon requires the use of innovative approaches to both counter and prevent terrorism and extremism. Until each and everyone feels that he is a stakeholder in contributing to the success of our security institutions, number one. Number two, each and everyone must be passionate about protecting his country and delivering his mandate. In Nigeria, as in anywhere in the world, we have our own share of uh, challenges when it comes to terrorism and violent extremism. We have our own share. However, there is no country that is safe today because of globalization. Even if you don't have there is high tendency that your country will be attacked. So it is because of this there is no country that you can say is 100% safe and free from extremism and uh, terrorism. However, the challenges faced by some countries is much, much higher than others. Joining me now in the studio to discuss this is political analyst Smart Akbejoye. Thank you, Smart, for staying with us still. Thank you for having now, me. Now, what's your take on this? How do you react to this development? Well, you see, if I have an agency, you can't tell me how to recruit. I will use all trending means to do my recruitment. However, you see, this is where I expect the government to live above even the, the terrorists. I talked about sensitization. I talked about education. In the first place, nobody will come and ask me now to come and join a terrorist group and promise me a house, promise me a feeding, promise me whatever, because I can afford those things myself. So I am minus one for their recruitment. The same thing, let me tell you, if you have a good means of livelihood, if you have a sustainable means of livelihood, nobody will come and recruit you. This is a country where, if you want to know that, look, we are sitting on a, 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 a gunpowder, is whenever you see a small uh, disturbance in a street, you will see the number of unemployed youths that will come out. And you see, what does that portray? That means we have a large portion of unemployed youths that are vulnerable, that are willing to use in the hands of mischief makers. That is why during uh, election, you see most of these youths, you see politicians going to recruit them, give them as low as 1,000 naira, give them branded t-shirts, give them pure water, give them food, concussion to eat, and they will follow them. You see, it is sad. I have said, look, I choose to, be, to remain in Nigeria, and I will always be remain in Nigeria. I can't imagine myself going to America and leave. The moment I'm in America, after about three, four weeks, even I, I, I hardly stay, maybe the highest I've stayed is five weeks, and maybe because I have something to do. I can't stay, okay. because I don't fit into that system. Now, why don't I fit into that system? And these are the countries where people are dying to go and live. Because they don't have a, because they don't, because they don't have a future. Let me tell you, in Nigeria, we have more than enough, we have more than enough uh, 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 jobs that we go around that even we will begin to call for people from the neighboring countries to come and work in Nigeria. We have not explored our education system. We have not explored our health system. We have not explored our tourism system. We have not even explored our, even, uh, our uh, uh, um, security system. This is a country right. where people are always willing. If somebody comes, if you don't have a job, my brother, and somebody come and say, okay, I'll give you 50,000 naira. What is the minimum wage? 30,000 naira, and they are still fighting over it. I'll give you 50,000 naira. I'll give you breakfast, lunch, dinner. Don't worry, we'll go and kidnap girls that you will, that you will mess up with. Don't worry, just come and join us. They will give you whatever. You will go, you, you, and you find out that you are better off there 
than here, you will go. You know, what I find, for me, what I find um, disturbing and alarming is that the minister is finding this trend of the use of social media um, as a revelation because in, in the terrorist organization of the world, the use of social media is, is not a new phenomenon. No, it's maybe, not maybe to the insurgents and the terrorists we have in, in this region, maybe it's become a, a new phenomenon. But to the terrorists of the world, it's not. Now, that's why I come to the issue of intel, information gathering, intelligence gathering. How do our security outfits begin to be ahead of this terrorist group? What do they need to do to checkmate this trend? You see, I have said something. I said, as far as I'm concerned, the people fighting terrorism, we are fighting terrorism. We are not even, we are, not fight, we are fighting terrorism by attacking. We should be fighting terrorism from the scratch. How do we ensure that even this people does not even recruit people? How do we even arrest them at that point of recruitment? How do we arrest them at that point of planning the attack? Instead of probably they will come and attack, you will now call police or you call soldiers, they will now start pursuing them. They say they will pursue them to their base. No, that is not how to fight terrorism. How we fight terrorism is that in the first place, we cut their supply chain. How do we cut their supply chain that they are not even begin, that they don't, they don't even have people to recruit? But today, there are more Nigerians, there are more Nigerians willing to even join the terrorist group, more youths with the joining terrorist group because they don't have means of livelihood. Look, if I join the terrorists, I will die. I, I may die. If I don't join the terrorists, I may die because of hunger or even because the, my recreation is that I will go and watch a, a football match and SARS will come there. They will say because they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are working on intelligence, whatever, they will come there and shoot people watching this thing. They will go around and raid clubs, hotels, Bars, which they have been doing now, right now in Ikorodu. They've read virtually most of the popular bars in Ikorodu. People are even scared to go, even go out again. That is the new trend now. You see, it is wrong. All this, the approach that they are using to fight terrorism, to fight cultism, to fight armed robbery, they are outdated, they are archaic. How you do it is that you take it to their doorstep. If we don't have community policing, if we don't have effective community policing, we will never fight terrorism. The community policy that we're talking about is not the one that, the, that the, it's for the general police have in mind, that they are going to employ special constable that, that are not entitled to salary, not entitled to anything, that no. The community policy that we have is that put the policing in the hand of the community. It, I'll take a good example of Lagos. In Lagos, we have ballet. We have ballets. We have obas. Apart from ballets and obas, we have CDA chairmen. All the criminals, so to say, live, with, live, live somewhere yeah. within, the, within, the community. within the community. Let us go to that community. Before they come out, let us go and arrest them first. Let them come and ask me, smart Olu Wale, that what do you do for a living? We see you drive various kind of cars. We see you live a, a, a station life. What do you do for a living? Sir, we are not arresting you, but we are only asking you to please come and explain yourself. And in that case, local you intelligence. Will do, yes, yes, you will do a profiling. In profiling me, in profiling me, you will know if I'm a criminal or not. I will tell you, one, one inspector general, I'll just quickly tell you that. They arrested some boys 1980, in 1980. They came to, and they said these boys are ham robbers, they are whatever, whatever. They came to arrest. And I was, I was very vociferous. I, I said, you cannot arrest me. I was a small boy then, in Bariga. They took us to Pedro Police Station. When we got to Pedro Police Station, the DPO then, he later became, an, he later became a, 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 a CP, and he later died. I met him when he was CP in Undo State again, and I introduced myself to him, and he was so happy to see me. Do you know what? He asked everybody to pull his dress, just go into your pints. Now it is boxer short, then it is pints. When he also said, Miss one, take this one away. This one is a school boy. Which school do you attend? Sorry, take one naira, go back to your this thing. And he said, Look, all these boys profiled them. And most of those boys that he profiled, they were really criminals. Most of those people that he, most of us that he asked to go, we are innocent. I went to fetch water. They were fighting somewhere. I went to fetch water. My bucket is just at um, oh, yeah, this thing at, on Pedro Road. There is one car wash there. I forgot after Johnson. So what is so pertinent? What is pertinent what is, is that pertinent we for should us do, to do at this what, point what in time. What we should do yes. now, we must go back to that basis. That basis is that we must go and introduce community policing. Let us put the security in the, of let's put the security of lives and property in the hands of, of the people. Community. Political analyst Smart Akbejuri, thank you very much for your contributions. Thank you.